Jay-Z, yep. welcome to you. Oh, thank you, Jim. Every now and Hi. then yes. when we talk about blood on the floor, yes. it's sort of one of those ones where the, the blood sort of dribbles out, you know, like a puddle that sort of dribbles out yes, further. like a slow drip. Yeah, just sort of, but, but there's a big puddle about it and it just oh, sort right. of works its way out. Seeps. And then there's other examples <laughs> of where an artery's been hit yes. Yes. and blood is spurting yeah. everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Gushing. That is what appears yes. to be going on at Essendon. It has been extraordinary. Like, you think of the big stories over the past 10 years. We know Essendon, su- Essendon Supplement Saga. Things got been funky at Carlton when Mick Mouldhouse left. Yes. And St. Co- St. Kilda's blown up over the journey. But the past week at Tullamarine has been absolutely extraordinary. It has. And today has been just about the biggest day of all. I mean, other than Ben Rutten, who was moved on, of course, uh, over the weekend, Today, the CEO, Xavier Campbell, mm-hmm. after nine years, uh, resigns and four board members walk out. So we're Jeez. talking the vice president, Peter Allen. We're talking Paul Brasher. We're talking Sean Wellman uh, as well. And um, Simon Madden. And Simon Madden mm-hmm. as well. So that's formed. So the club is effectively napalmed. Two of those are premiership players. Greats. Yep. Right. Essendon greats. So what's happened here is they've walked out essentially because they had hitched their wagon to um, the decision to keep Ben Rutten. Yep. But when David Barham comes in and says, look, we need a whole heap of change at this football club, well, their position largely becomes untenable. And that's what Xavier Campbell uh, said today in essentially uh, his departure. Four board members go out as well. They're now going to start an external review. And I believe we'll hear some appointments um, on who will drive that external review bill by the end of the week. Mm-hmm. And that will take a whole encompassing look at this football club. It's coaching, it's culture, it's list management, and we'll work in step with a new coaching selection. Just finishing move. on those departing board members. Yep. N- normally what that says to me, uh, Jay-Z, is that those board members do not support the direction the club's about to head in. Correct. And as soon as you're sitting there and saying, oh, I don't support what, what's about to happen, yep. then the only thing you can do is stand up and walk out. If you're a proper director. Yep. Which they've done. Which, which they've done. So, so, good so on that's them. to their credit. Well, of course yeah, it, is. it is. But it also talks to the, the interest in what's about to happen. Yeah. Because no one can... So you talk about strategy. Uh, you know, What does that look like? Mm. Well, that that is essentially what they've got to work out because uh, until now it's been a dog's breakfast and there has been no unity. There has been the opposite, right? So now Dave Barham saying, right, we'll get all, all in new people. We will get on the same page and try and drive a clear direction for this football club, which hasn't won a final since 2004. Right. Well, are the players on the same page? What's happening there? Well, there was a fiery response. This, this is really interesting, Phil, because some say, well, is this hypocritical of the players? Because we have heard over the first the past couple of months, like a few sort of whispers, the players aren't happy, yes, you know, yep, they're not yep. all on the same page. And then um, Ben Rutten goes, and then they're up in arms about it. So which way does the playing group want it? And Dyson Heppel, as the captain, stood up for Ben Rutten and spoke to uh, Dave Barham and, and questioned the club's values and, and all that sort of stuff. But there, there's been some reaction like, well, well where's all this unity been... In, yeah, in, in past. We weren't playing well. Mm. Exactly. What about Dodoro and Marnie? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So Adrian Dodoro has been ahead of the list since 1998. Now, as we speak, he has the strong support of Kevin Sheedy and Dave Barham. Right. So the view of the new look board at the moment is that Adrian's going to lead our preparations into this draft and trade period. And then the external re- review with independent eyes. I mean, who knows what that's going to re- right. reveal. But Makes f- sense. Yes. Of course it does. Because he is nine tenths of the way in negotiations. Well, no doubt. With a lot of their kids. As Jim said, it's a very important month coming up. So, so how do they attack this month without a coach is the interesting thing to me. Yes. Because they've already started to march players out the door, Cutler being one of them today. Yep. So if you you suddenly get uh, an experienced coach to come in, yeah. they're going to turn around and say, well, what the hell are you doing getting rid of him? Not well, a, I not wanted a him and I wanted him as well. Yeah. And now you've cut him. I mean, this is not the time of year to not no. have a senior coach. No, it's shocking timing. It's the advantage North Melbourne's got because Alistair Clarkson's spoken to the players and he's in step with the list strategy. So this process is going to take, what, a month at least. A month if it's Jeez. quick to appoint a senior coach. So if that's Adam Uze, can they twist Ken Hinkley's arm? I'm not sure. Ross Lyon, is he that interested? Doesn't seem it. So they're going to have to go conduct a whole thorough process through a whole big pool of candidates to find. And as you say, they're a bit behind the eight ball now, aren't they? Because... You know, this new coach hasn't spoken to the players and he's at least a month away. So it is going to be interesting, as we understand at the moment, Josh Marnie is a really important person and he's respected in the football club. He has two years remaining on a contract. So apparently on Sunday, he made a huge last-ditch bid 
to keep Ben Rutten. Right. So even after the game on Saturday and Ben Rutten's press conference on Saturday night, Josh Marty went in there and said, how many second-year coaches have yeah. all the answers? And Isn't... took them to the finals first year. Exactly. Did Mark Thompson know? Did Simon Goodwin have all the answers? Did they make mistakes? Did Damien Harbick make mistakes? So he said, look, you know, Ben Rutten's still on a par with these sorts of guys. So anyway, it failed. The, uh, the president wanted change. They're going to bring in a, a new coach. Adrian Dodoro is, is in charge of the list management at the moment. I think they've got an interest in Cam Zerha. Captain, before we get to Cam Zerha. Yes. So um, Dyson Heppel won't be captain next year, but I don't think you could automatically say it's going to be Zach Merritt either. No. So For some reason, they, it's not Zach. No. We so, all from outside the club yeah. think he should be, but. He's their best player. Yeah. But he's not necessarily their best, best leader. leader. Yeah. Which which happens a bit yeah, it does. at, at it does. football clubs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's not necessarily um in sync. So he's Sam Draper the man. You Ooh, know big Drake. A lot of respect for Mason Redmond. Redmond, yeah. So I think that's gonna be really interesting and, and someone's gonna have to really impress, you know, when they come back to, to mm. pre season training to stick their hand up for that leadership right, position. You mentioned Cam Zerha. I'm going to talk about him next. Does yep. he stay at North Melbourne? Does he move? Brad Hill, Brody Grundy, or oh, there are big names mm. uh, we need to discuss with you. More with Jay Clark next on the Rush Hour. Triple M has got a brand new book out, but Jay Z Clark has stuck around. Plenty more footy yeah, news to chat. We're going to do some player movement in a moment, but Dane yes. Zorko, before we get to that. Yeah, interesting. Max Gorn, the captain of uh, Melbourne's yeah. press conference yesterday, I was there. He said he hopes this is a line in the sand for the game, that there's no more you know, derogatory slurs about family members. He said he's never heard heard anything like the uh, the comment that was directed from Zorko, Brisbane's captain, uh, to Harrison Petty, the Melbourne, young Melbourne defender. But there's some discontent at, at Brisbane bubbling really? away over the last sort of 24 hours because from the Lions perspective, and I'm not sure anyone's going to come out and say this publicly or, or put their name to it, but if you, if you get around the back rooms of Brisbane, they are saying that it might have been going both ways. Right on uh, on Friday night, there might have been a bit of verbal sort of coming uh, back and forth, and some mm. of that uh, back over the fence might have been pretty intense as well. So oh. you'll note, Billy, that Melbourne didn't want to take it any further. Like it was all quickly disposed with. Yes, both well, sides coming out and saying we move on, went away. Yes. No, no further investigations, yes, please. It was that was surprising actually. So to be fair to Brisbane, and we don't, you know, what Zorko said was horrific, yes. and it shouldn't be said. Exactly. But I just think in the heat of the moment, I think history might show, Jim, that there might have been a bit of uh, back and forth between the two sides. But as Gorney said, we're better than that. Exactly. All right. Mm. Cam Zerha. Well, let's, let's roll through some names. Yes. yes. But well, as Clarko spoke, would have sat down and spoke to him, I'm sure. Yes. And clearly he is a required player at North Melbourne. But I think the dollars and cents are going to lift. Now, from uh, Cam Zerha's perspective, and we know what a gun, a damaging forward he mm. can be. He's tough as... Uh, a cat's head, it's fair to say, but I think the offer is is, is a little low, Bill. Come on, Jim. So <laughs> yeah, I think then I think that purse needs to be filled up a little bit for a man. I think he's only twenty four, so he's still got his best footy ahead of him. Now, as I understand it, Essendon are having a good look. St Kilda have some interest, and this should be sort of stitched up. Pretty quickly. Not Perth? Like, he's not a go-home um, I think it's more of a Victorian right, is okay, where yep. a lot of the interest is. So, Horn um, Francis, Clark A would have spoken to him. Yeah, so he's locked and loaded. Good. He's He's going to be there, he's uh, there next year. Yeah, cool. He's, he's staying at North. Great. Yeah. Good. So he's totally energised and, and committed to the cause, right. and I think we will see... Um, a big preseason from Jason Horn Francis, Good. but Cam Zerha, I think he's going to need a bit more chachi, um, so that he will stay. Chachi. What well, is I'm he sure worth? They've got decent room. <laughs> you would hope they're nowhere near the top of the salary cap. <laughs> 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 Who would be getting oh it? God. Who would be getting it? Well, when are you Pollock. coming? When are you finishing eighteenth? No, I'm I, trying I would, to. I'd <laughs> imagine, Bill. There's lots of room. <laughs> uh, Brad Hill yeah. is someone that uh, yes. already been spoken about with Al Clark. Yes, we touched on him last week, so I think this is one really to watch because Brad Hill isn't as happy as he would like to be at Moorabbin. So from his perspective, you know, he's been thrown around um, back and forward. Hasn't been settled down on a wing where he's been one of the best over the past 10 years. I think there's been a bit of negative feedback about the salary he accepted. Mm -hmm. But that's on St Kilda, isn't it? Yeah, if, of course. If you, when Channel 7 came to you, Jim, and just backed up the truck, oh, I mean, what are you to do? You're yeah, only... But, but how happy are they? <laughs> don't mean... Oh, yeah. Brian, Brian's um, not happy. Uh, Brian, Brian, no, 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 no I, I'm with you. Yeah. It's not his fault they're paying yeah. him what they're paying him. Exactly. So I think this is a real watch this space. Now, it could be Adam Trelaw Mark II here. 
So Collingwood had to pay 250 grand to get Adam Trelaw out and free up some of that salary cap money. So does St Kilda to trade Brad Hill out and free up some salary cap room? Do they have to pay two or three hundred? He's on about eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. North Melbourne, does he fit the list profile perfectly? Like he's twenty eight years old. Would they no. be ideally going no. someone? Youngest well, or? I would say that there's four more at least years in him. Yep. Because he's not an impact player. He's, he's an up and yeah. back, you know, gut runner. Right. One of the so, best in the game. Yeah, unbelievably good at that. So if you're yep. buying four years, yep. then I think you are. Yep. Brody Grundy, yes. tell me about him. Oh, so is we, he heading down the highway? We mentioned this uh, a few weeks ago, Bill. He's he got did. some options, mm-hmm. right? So we know Melbourne is very keen. He sat down and had a coffee with Max Gorn. Max Gorn said, I'll play forward, Brody. You take the ruck for 70% and we can be... Uh, that won't happen. We can be da- damaged. Like Lillian Marsh is a great combination, but the cats are also interested. And oh, and one of the things that have flown Grundy and Stanley Lillian Marsh, yeah. And one of the, one of the great things that have got is flown Jesus. under the radar wow. is how much salary cap room the cats have, right? So with um, Dangerfield, I think coming back from eight fifty to six fifty, there might be more than a million dollars well, of salary cap room. All their good players are all older and getting less money. Hawk and Selwood. You go through them all. He's a genius. Well, so in big a, truck, Mackie. And Mackie. And there's a bit of money there. So a Cerebral so, act, though, Brody Grundy, isn't he? He's, what do you mean? He's what do you smart, mean? He's a smart man. Yes. So. Yeah, he ain't living in Geelong. Yes, he is. <laughs> um, everyone wants to go Geelong. Holly Henry. Even the spirit of Tasmania's yes, going there. Yes, mm. that would be good. But then once you come over across the boat, you then got to drive up to drive Melbourne, up to don't Melbourne. you, Bill? Don't yeah. tell them that. <laughs> so, <they're from laughs> Holly Henry, what are yes. we doing? So he's Another interesting, one? Bill. So, um, uh, Jim. So they've been, Collingwood's been trying to stitch him up for months. Again, this was another low ball offer. I think Ollie Henry is a good, talented young forward. Of course, his brother plays at Geelong. Yes. Jack, they Jack. both catch it. They have sticky mitts. There's no yeah. doubt about that. But from Ollie Henry's perspective, Dan McStay's coming into the forward line. Bobby Hill's coming into the forward line. So if you're Ollie Henry and you've been in and out of the team, mm, he's you're saying, thinking, hang on. Yeah, we, we, what about me? What about me? But yeah, I mean, we know Mason Cox is getting older and my chick's not going to play forever. So I think this is more likely to still be done as a recommitment right. at Collingwood than anything can else. Adam Kingsley, the man with the huge arms, oh, can he turn Hopper and Taranto around? Or uh... I think it's more unlikely. I think Tim Taranto is really weighing up his options. I think he's been playing a lot forward at GWS. I think he would like a big lick of the midfield ice cream. Oh, yes, and, <laughs> and at a big club like Richmond... Or Collingwood or Geelong, Hopper. there is a sizable opportunity. Hopper's the same. Ballarat product. The Cats, Wells, he's liked oh, him for years. Yes, so with sort of Dangerfield getting older, Selwood getting older, they get in a nice big bat around. But he has. He's contracted for one more year, Bill. So there's got to be a trade. I don't give yeah, a stuff. sucked in. <laughs> Look at him. Yeah. Down so, the highway. Uh, so Atkins out in the... No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 so you keep no, everyone. No, no. You're one of those rare clubs that never has to lose him. anyone. Um, <laughs> Carl Aim on a Port Adelaide. Yes. So Port Adelaide at this stage, happy to let him walk. He's a free agent. So getting six six fifty at Hawthorne. That's good money. Good coin. To, yeah, provide some run in a yeah. in a in midfield that's beautiful. Got some older players with uh, Jay Gromier and Tommy Mitchell, Chad Wingard, etc. So Port Adelaide are happy to do that and are still eyeing Josh Dunkley. So Josh Dunkley's mm. talks with the Bulldogs are still dragging on. Well, he hasn't signed yet, so that means something. And you speak to the people at the kennel, and they still think, no, no, we, we, it's all good. No. Just taking some time. We're happy to keep him. Uh, but going to have Adelaide... to leave Trelaw. That's the big question. How yeah. does he leave him? Because they're tight, aren't they? Oh, tight. Wow. Isaac Top Rankin, we, yes. we said this a few weeks ago. He's going uh, to Adelaide. Uh, Gold Coast will want their first pick, which is pick five, and their second pick, which is Jeez, pick 23. Are parting with pick five for him? Ooh. Well, he was pick three. I know, but yeah. you, we've got a body of work to assess now, Jay-Z. Wow. You're parting with pick five for Isaac Rankin. You're a very talented player, Jim. Oh Marcus, God, you want to be delivering. You're the better judge. Who goes number one? Marcus Ashcroft's boy. Yes. But then who's two? Who's North Melbourne get? No, this is the thing. The recruiters, when we've been speaking to them, they're saying this is an even bunch and you've got to throw a blanket over them. So they said get back to us in a couple of weeks. They're still walking. I think there's going to be a bit of movement in terms of the trading at the top end. And Gold Coast, if they get pick five and pick seven, they could come with a rush in the trade period with two first picks as well. So they want a running half back. And they could be doing some trading because Stuart Jew wants to play finals next year. You hear it first from you now, man. He's he told us about it. Grundy he a did. month ago. <laughs> and and he Rankin. And Rankin. Uh, you hear it first from Jay-Z. Thanks. Well done, mate. Good on you, boys. JB and Bill, Triple M's Rush Hour.